Hey guys, B Snappy here. I'm here with Neil. He was a Top Gun pilot in the Royal Australian Air Force. Hey Neil. Right. Neil's going to tell us a bit about the famous F-111 fighter jet. Why they design it so the wings swing out? It basically gives you the best of both worlds. With the, uh, the wings swung forward, the aircraft can land and take off at uh, relatively slow speeds. When the wings are back as they are there, then that helps the aeroplane to go very quickly. It will go faster than two and a half times the speed of sound. So Neil, tell us about the ejection system that's different to all the other planes. Well, with the Mirage in the F-18, when the pilot ejects, the canopy comes off and the pilot and his ejection seat leave the aeroplane. In this aeroplane, the whole cockpit leaves. You might note the line that runs here all the way around the capsule. When the aircrew eject from the aeroplane, uh, initially, there's an explosive charge that goes all the way around, separates the capsule from the aeroplane. There's other explosive charges separate the control lines and separate all the electrical connections. And then a rocket motor ignites. Uh, the whole capsule is oh, ejected wow. from the aeroplane and then three big parachutes open up and the whole capsule is lowered down to the ground. The interesting thing is after the capsule lands on the ground, if it comes down in the water, the pilots can um, make a connection between the bottom of the control column yep. and then by moving the control column backward and forward, it makes it a bilge pump to pump water overboard oh, if there's water what? leaking into the capsule. So half boat, half cockpit. That's right, that's right. So based on my internet research, you guys had an issue with these wings snapping off. Uh, we didn't in our Air Force. Yeah. After the aircraft was first introduced in the US Air Force, um, I think they lost two or three aircraft where one of the wings separated from oh, the aircraft. What? The issue with that was the, the steel that was used for the main structure to hold the wings onto the aircraft was a relatively new steel and its mm. characteristics weren't particularly well understood. Yeah. Um, so what the, uh, the US Air Force did, but to get around the problem, they had to build a big hangar and cool the aircraft to a very, very low temperature and then put maximum load on the wings. And if the structure that held the wings was going to fail, then it would do so when they were conducting that test. I see it's got a Gatling gun. Yeah, that's right. It's basically the same weapon that is fitted to the F-18. Uh, it can fire 6,000 or 4,000 rounds a minute. In All the right. F-111, it was uh, removable and it was mounted in the uh, bomb bay, which is under the aircraft there. Later on, when we introduced the uh, what we call pave tack pod, and that's uh, an infrared pod to allow the pilots to see uh, targets on the ground at night time. With that fitted to the aircraft, uh, you couldn't have the gun fitted at the same time. Check this out, a whole cluster bomb. Yes, that was... Uh, a weapon that was developed uh, in Australia. It was never actually introduced into service. The United Nations um, introduced a treaty where they were trying to ban those weapons. Australia oh. endorsed that treaty and agreed that we wouldn't use those weapons. Is this where they refuel? Uh, no, that's the fuel dump. Most aircraft like this that uh, get airborne with a lot of fuel, they have a facility where they can dump fuel if yeah. they have a problem and they need to land reasonably quickly. And this is where the F-111 does that. This just basically moves back and oh. uh, fuel streams out the back there. You might have seen at air shows and on TV, the F-111 had a thing they called the dump and burn. So there'd be great big flame coming out oh. behind the aeroplane. And that's what they'd do. They'd select the fuel jettison on yeah. and then light the afterburner. Oh, and then so that it would burns ignite it. all the fuel that's coming out of the oh. back of the aeroplane. Just look at the pure size of this engine. <gasps> if you watch one of my previous videos on the Mirage or the Hornet, we had to duck to get under the wing. But now I can just freely stand. This is just absolutely huge. Look at the size of this fuel tank. The aeroplane carried 33,000 pounds of fuel. Um, typically use 3,000 pound of fuel while they started the engines, did all their checks and got airborne. And that 33,000 pound, if they got airborne, left the afterburners engaged, operated at high speed, they'd be out of fuel in about 30 minutes. On the other hand, if they climbed to altitude, cruised at their optimum altitude, 
and uh, at their optimum airspeed, but fuel would allow them to stay airborne for about eight hours. The big door there, as well as being um, to allow the undercarriage to track, is actually the speed brake. Oh, wow. Because jet aeroplanes are so sleek, uh, they can be difficult to slow down. Yeah. So jet aeroplanes always have spoilers or speed brakes to uh, help to slow down, and that was the speed brake on the F 111. We're going to go up the stairs here and look at the F 111 cockpit. The first thing I noticed is the cockpit side-by-side -side seating. Uh, yeah, that's correct. The pilot would be on the left-hand side and the uh, weapon system operator on the right-hand side here. The weapon system operator has the uh, radar system here, so he's got a little hood there where if there's uh, sunlight reflecting on his radar screen, he can put his face in there to uh, enable him to see what's going on. Uh, the right-hand seater also has a um, control column in case he needs to fly the aeroplane uh, for some reason. Spoiled F-111 crews, they get themselves a thermos to keep <laughs> them happy. Nice lamb's wool seat covers. <laughs> yeah. just, just like a Cadillac. <laughs> a massive air intake. The air intake in the F-111, as in most jet aeroplanes, is fairly complicated. Um, although the aeroplane can fly supersonic, Jet engines can only accept air that is subsonic, that's slower than the speed of sound. So I use shock waves to slow the air down to a subsonic speed. Like in the Mirage, that point moves forward as the aeroplane oh, yeah. goes faster. It generates a shock wave, um, which always has to be kept outside the intake. This surface here also generates a shock wave. Now, as the air flows over the front of the aeroplane, there's a turbulent boundary layer close to the surface of the, uh, the fuselage. So the idea of this is that the turbulent air goes down there and not down the engine intake because the engine likes air that's flowing directly in and isn't all turbulent. And that's the point of all the little blades that you can see in the intake there. That's to smooth out the, uh, the airflow in the engine to uh, hopefully prevent engine surges. Thanks for the info, that was so great. Oh yeah, my pleasure. If you like this video, make sure you come down to Fighter World at Williamtown, like, subscribe, and check the description for the other videos with Neil, and I'll see you in the next one. Be snappy out.